my craziest client story. I've had all of the traditional stories, peeing, fainting, you know, um, <clears throat> inappropriate sexual uh, arousal, you know, uh, passing out, all the, all the normal ones. I've had clients get weird names, like I had a dude with a thug life on his ass, but like, I don't know how much of you thug you are getting thug life on your ass, but. It's pretty thug, I mean, go to, go to jail with that. That's, be careful. I mean, thug life for real. Take it, you yeah, know? watch yourself. She came in to get a filigree piece around her genitals. And um, all the things she told me that she, um, that she was fine with me tattooing her because she was not interested in men. She was attracted to women. So I said, all right, no problem. You know, if you feel comfortable, um, I have no problem because the tattoo was in a pretty, like, very intimate area. I think during the session, she started to get aroused. And by the end of the session, she told me that I have, that I had changed her uh, perspective <laughs> about her sexuality. I was just sitting there shocked because I didn't know what to respond to her at that moment. It caught me, you know, like, out of, you know, like, I was like, why? <laughs> what, why are you saying this to me right now? So I didn't tattoo him. It was just like an appointment request. It was in Vienna and I was like, tattooing for one year. I did all that lettering stuff and black work and line work and stuff. And then I had a request for a realistic nature piece. And I was super excited. I was like, yes, finally somebody like trusts me enough to like let me do a realistic piece. Where was that? And he, he it was came, like I want it no, right no. here. He came in and he I hope he's not watching that video. But he, <laughs> he was like He probably got it done by somebody no. else if you didn't do it. But like 55 like, what? 55, 60 or something. And he looked like a, a writer who still lives at his mom's house? At his mom's house. So he came in for a consultation, we talked, and he showed me all these beautiful references. No offense, like, I still live at my mom's house. <laughs> you do not. No, no. Beautiful reference pictures, like flowers, nature, like grass, forest, butterflies, bugs, but such good quality pictures. Like usually you get shitty reference pictures. I was so excited, like actual photography of nature. And I got super excited. We talked about it, I'm like, yeah, I can like do the butterfly over there, and like grass coming out here, trees, whatever. Grass coming out of where? <laughs> I'm not who listen out of something. So, and then I totally forgot to ask him about the uh, location. The location. So I went to the front desk and like took my calendar and was about to like schedule his appointment. And I asked him, hey, what's the body placement? And then he told me he wanted on his dick. Wait, how like, big was his dick? He wanted <laughs> like everywhere. They're like, hey, and you got a leg as a penis? <laughs> <laughs> you want to no, have a leg? So I was like shocked. Like oh, everywhere. On his balls. Dick, like everywhere oh, no. in was, that he area. Was... And he looked so weird. He had no tattoos. And, and now we know I why got... he lived with his mom. Exactly. And I asked him, why do you want it exactly in that area, not somewhere else? Because he's like, well, he only want to make people happy. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I want to have something to show. <laughs> I would say like probably five, six years back when I was working in a street shop in LA. I had this couple come in and it was her first tattoo and they're from Brazil and they were so adamant on making her pussy into a butterfly. So I'm just like, it's your first tattoo and he was like, no, no, you don't understand. We've been wanting this, it's, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so the whole process of me like shaving and everything, I was like, do you want to shave? And she's like, oh no, you can go for it, you know, like shave. I'm just like, all right, let me go in there and shave. <laughs> and I, you know, I basically made her and to a butterfly, it was the, the slit was the body, and you know, from there you can just imagine what it was. I think he wanted more because he was like during the process he would like ask like customers like, hey, come check this out. My wife's getting her pussy tattooed. I'm just like, bro, <laughs> like you don't care. Like she's out in the open. Like when I was doing uh, just after my apprenticing, uh, I had a guy coming in for like a small tattoo and pretty big, like super muscled and tall, and I tattooed him. And he asked me after the tattoo, he's like, so how long is this gonna last for? Like, how, how long is it in for? I'm like, well, it's, it's forever. He's like, for, forever, forever? Yeah, what do you mean? It's like, it's not like, you know, a year, it's gone. No, it's a tattoo, man. And he started to freak out. And I was freaking out too, like, what do you want me to say? And he's big and like, and he was just becoming like a little like, 
pussy. I'm like, okay, well, man, you should maybe know before you get a tattoo that this is permanent. Yeah, when I apprenticed too, people would come in all the time and be like, how long do these last? And I was like, till you die. Yeah, it's... Or lose tattoo. the limb that you got it on. Yeah. I was tattooing probably like my first full back piece. And um, I was doing some like bio-organic stuff. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just kind of scribbling stuff on there. But the guy that I was tattooing, he was like this big muscle guy, always working out, probably taking a whole bunch of supplements or whatever. <laughs> so I got him on like those, uh, those massage chairs and he's, he's leaned over like this, sweat pouring out of him. And I could tell, it's like, something's not right. He's not feeling good or whatever. And I look over, like, hey man, you feeling right? He just pops his head up, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm cool, I'm cool. I'm like, all right. No more than a couple of minutes later, I smell duty. I'm like, dude, you sure you feel all right? No. He's like, yeah, yeah, I feel all right. I'm like, all right, because, uh, you know, it's starting to stink over here a little bit. He's like, yeah, oh, I'm all right. No. So then I'm tattooing now his lower back, and I see just creeping up from his underwear, just like, like fucking duty yellow or green stains coming from his underwear. And I'm like, dude, you shit your pants? He pooped the bed. Pooped his pants. And he pops his head up. He turns around, he can't see anything, but he puts his hand behind his, you know, on his underwear, and he's like, my hand's wet, my hand, why is my hand wet? I'm like, dude, you shit your pants. So he gets up, he runs out to the front of the, uh, the shop, goes outside, and I see him like on the phone panicking. And after a couple of minutes, he comes back in, he's all calmed down, and he's ready to sit back down and start tattooing again. I'm like, nah, dude, I'm not tattooing you right now, it's shit all over your back and your ass. <laughs> like, go home and shower. <laughs> He's like, oh, really? Like, yeah, dude. So he goes home, showers, and- And he comes back? He was like, yeah, I'll be right back. I'm like, all right. I mean, he booked the day, but I didn't I didn't see him again after that. I saw him like months oh, after. God, he was too embarrassed. Yeah, yeah, Oh yeah, my he, goodness. Uh, he didn't come back that day. So my, my friend Melody owns a bar, um, Lucky 13, and on her birthday every year I go and she just gets everyone fucking trashed. And two hours in, I meet this guy, Terry, who, if you've ever seen the Highlander and you know what the Kurgan is, that's Terry. So Terry comes up to me with his, you know, unsmiling, unapologetic face. And he's like, I hear you're a tattooer. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a tattooer. And he's like, will you tattoo my dick? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll tattoo your dick. What are you doing tomorrow? You just come to shot, I'll tattoo your dick. He's like, cool. Um, because I have a bet with your friend Melody who owns the bar that I won't get the Nirvana smiley face on the head of my dick. And I'm like, oh, I got you, baby. You just come, I'll just do it for you. So he went around to different tattoo shops and looking like the way he does, you know, being in a motorcycle gang and, you know, being seven foot whatever and looking like he's from the Aryan nation and has his whole fucking face with shitty tattoos. Nobody, wa nobody wanted to touch his dick or tattoo him in general. So I was like, oh, I'll tattoo your dick, Terry. You just come in. So he comes in and he's terrified he's like, I don't think I can do this. Like, do I have to be hard for this? I can't jerk myself off in front of you. I'm like, no, I, I don't I don't think that's how this works. But um, yeah, so we just put the armrest at face level and he just rested his dick. He shaved for me, which is really sweet. And um, yeah, I just like smashed the head of his dick on the armrest and just the Nirvani smiley face on the head of his dick. And then he immediately went to Lucky 13 bar and showed his dick and won some sort of mediocre prize. I was tattooing at the studio and there was there were riots outside of the studio. Like, uh, there's massive riots going on in Istanbul. And like, it's like a block away from us. There's like thousand, maybe hundred thousand people out there like fighting with the police. And there is a fight broke out in our shop like a drunken guy got into the shop, started like cursing to everybody. I don't know why, but like, I think there's been a thing going on with the shop owner. I don't know the guy, but shop owner said that I, he knew that guy anyway. Yeah, I was tattooing at the back all by myself and he c come in, started throwing things to, the, to me, to my client and stuff, everything. Whatever he got his hands on, he was like throwing it, and we end up like got in a fight. So we throw him out of the studio. But when we did that, police saw us, so they thought oh, that man. we are riot rioting also, and we end up like explaining them that we are not rioting. This is nothing to do with 
things going on in block away but it was like so scary because like they were like interrogating us like what are you doing here what is going on we got arrested by the oh way. you did yeah oh my God. we end up like <laughs> just for working coming in front of a judge explaining it over and over again that we are not doing anything against this police this is not so, yeah. just random thing going on but yeah it was crazy i had this one client uh that I didn't realize that everybody was avoiding until she came in. Uh, but uh, my boss at the time came up to me and he was like, hey, we got this client coming in. Uh, do you want to take her? She just wants her nipples tattooed in the shape of hearts. And I was like, I'm so down, like, let me do that. So I was like, yeah, of course. And uh, then like 10 minutes later, another artist walked up to me and he was like, thank you. And I was like, wait a second. What did I just get myself into? <laughs> this lady comes in completely plastered and we're all just, she's, she's crazy as fuck. Like she's just like walking around, like hugging everybody. We don't know this person. She's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh my God, what are you doing? That's so sick. Holy shit, I want that on me next time. But tonight I'm getting my nipples done. And she's just like flashing everybody in the shop, like showing them the before essentially, so she can show them the after. And it was just, it was, it was, pretty insane. She would sneak off to the bathroom every like 45 minutes to like drink her handle of like Jack Daniels. And we're all just like, oh my God, what the fuck? At, at one point she literally like reached out to grab my chest and she was like, I like yours. I, I'm like, don't touch me. You touch me again, we're done. Like just sit still, please. So one was in my early days of tattooing in a street shop in Brooklyn. One day that I was uh, I was waiting for walk-ins, um, this lady comes in and she's very nervous, and you can tell that there's you know something up with her. She was she went through something. There was she was almost like borderline shock. Anyway, she comes in very desperate, and she goes, "Okay, um, I want you to tattoo." And she leans in close, and she goes, "Rocky's property." And uh, she ends up choosing old English letters in Rocky's nice. property, so super gangster. <laughs> um, and that was that. The next day, Rocky comes in, and and he's and he's just uh, yelling from the front, "Who's Gabe? I want to talk to Gabe." And I come out kind of nervous, like, "Me, dude. What's going on?" And he goes. He just cracks a big smile all of a sudden. He goes, my man, <laughs> I can't believe that crazy B actually did that. What? And he starts cracking up. And I'm kind of like, because I thought this guy was going to kill me, right? <laughs> so the next day she comes in and she is just devastated. Apparently, Rocky said that he didn't want anything to do with her crazy ass anymore. And now she's coming to me asking what we can do to cover it up. I was like, lady, I'm very, very sorry, but you gotta let that heal first, and then we can start talking about laser. <laughs>